The F-35 fighter jet is being changed, and the plans are coming from a real war. This isn't happening in an American lab, it's happening in the dangerous skies over the Middle East. Right now, Israel is teaching America how to use its own plane. Think about that. The United States built the F-35. They spent more money on it than any weapon in history. But Israel, a much smaller country, is showing them how it really works in a fight. What did Israel discover that America didn't? The answer is changing everything. Let's be clear, the U.S. Air Force has hundreds of these stealth jets, but on a normal day, half of them are broken. They're sitting on the ground, waiting for a repair part or a software update. It's a huge problem. Now, look at Israel's Air Force. They have far fewer F-35s, but nearly every single one is ready to fly every single day. Their jets are almost always prepared for combat. How is that possible? What's their secret? The secret isn't a better tool or a magic part. The secret is experience, real combat experience. While American pilots were training, Israeli pilots were fighting. They were taking the F-35 into actual battles against real enemies with powerful air defenses, and they learned lessons you can't learn on a test range. This is the story of how real war is the best teacher. It's how Israel's fights in Syria, Gaza, and Iran are giving America the data it needs to prepare for a bigger fight, perhaps against China. Israel is not just an ally getting free jets. Israel is a partner, testing America's most expensive weapon in the most difficult classroom on Earth. To understand this, we need to go back to the beginning. The F-35 was designed to be invisible to radar. It carries its weapons inside its body to stay hidden. For years, everyone wondered, would this work in a real war? Or was it just an expensive theory? Israel gave the world the answer. Without warning anyone, Israeli F-35s conducted the jet's very first combat mission. They flew deep into enemy territory, destroyed a heavily guarded target, and came home safely. No one knew if the jet could do that until Israel did it. It was a historic moment. From that day, Israel became the world's most important F-35 test pilot. But their tests weren't safe. Every mission was real. Every time they flew, they gathered information. Every time an enemy radar tried to find them, they learned something. All of this priceless data was sent back to the Pentagon and Washington. American engineers finally saw how their plane performed under fire. Israel didn't stop there. They soon used the F-35 to shoot down enemy drones, scoring its first air-to-air -air kills. They were writing the jet's combat record live. Then they made a bold move. They started using their jets in beast mode. This is a simple but radical idea. Normally, the F-35 hides its weapons inside to stay stealthy, but that means it can't carry many bombs or missiles. Beast mode means hanging weapons on the outside on the wings. It carries much more firepower, but it becomes easier for enemy radar to see. American engineers said this was a bad idea. They said it would make the jet visible and vulnerable. Israel did it anyway. They worked with the company Lockheed Martin to make stronger wings. They tested it in real combat over Syria and Gaza, and it worked. Their F-35s could carry a huge amount of weapons and still complete their missions. The Pentagon watched this closely. They saw it was a success. Now the U.S. Air Force is rushing to add the same beast mode capability to its own F-35s. They're copying Israel's idea. But the changes on the outside are just the start. What Israel did inside the jet is even more important. It touches on a sensitive secret. When Israel bought the F-35, they made one big demand. They wanted full control over the jet's electronic warfare system. This is the plane's brain for survival. It jams enemy radar, tricks missiles, and keeps the pilots safe. The U.S. and Lockheed Martin said no. The deal almost fell apart. Then, something amazing happened. America changed its mind. They gave Israel a special privilege no other country has. They let Israel rip out the American electronic brain and install one they built themselves. Why? 
because Israel faces specific, dangerous threats. They needed a system built to beat the Russian air defenses used by Iran and Syria, like the S-300 and S-400. Israel's company, Elbit Systems, built a new system, and it worked perfectly. In a recent mission, Israeli jets led by F-35s flew over a thousand miles into Iranian airspace. They flew through areas protected by those advanced Russian defenses. They hit their targets and came home. Not one jet was hit. The Iranian defenses couldn't lock onto them. The Pentagon watched this mission live. They saw Israeli F-35s defeat some of the best air defenses in the world, and they had a scary thought. American F-35s, with their standard systems, might not have been so lucky. Israel's version was better. Israel had jumped ahead. Now, let's talk about the big problem of broken jets. As we said, America's F-35s are often grounded. The system for fixing them is slow and complicated. It depends on a central computer that orders parts from around the world. There's lots of paperwork. It doesn't work well. Israel does the opposite. They refuse to be tied to this slow American system. They made a deal to do all their own maintenance. When an Israel F-35 has a problem, their own mechanics fix it right at their base. They use their own tools and their own spare parts. They don't wait for permission from America or for a box to arrive on a ship. This is why nearly all of Israel's jets are ready to fly. Their system is fast and simple. Pentagon leaders have admitted publicly that Israel's way is better. They say this is a crucial lesson for a future war in the Pacific against China. In that war, American jets will be thousands of miles from home. The slow repair system would break down. Israel proves there is a better way. Next, Israel solved another huge problem, range. The F-35 can fly about 670 miles to a target, do its job and fly back. But Iran is a thousand miles away from Israel. That's a 2,000-mile round trip. It's impossible without stopping to refuel in the air. And aerial tankers are big, slow, and easy targets in a war. So, Israel found a smart solution. They built special extra fuel tanks that fit snugly against the body of the F-35. These tanks are sleek and have little effect on the jet's stealth, but they hold a huge amount of extra fuel. They can increase the jet's range by 40% or more. Suddenly, Iran was within reach. Israeli F-35s could fly there, strike, and return home without ever needing a dangerous refueling tanker over enemy territory. They proved this on a real long-range mission into Iran. Again, the Pentagon took notes. Why? Because China is over 5,000 miles from the closest major American base. If US F-35s can't reach targets without vulnerable tankers, they lose. So? Guess what happened? The new U.S. military budget just set aside hundreds of millions of dollars to develop the exact same kind of external fuel tanks. It's a program America canceled years ago as too hard. Now they are copying Israel's design. They are literally reverse engineering an Israeli solution. Finally, the most important lesson isn't about hardware. It's about how to fight. Israel created a new way of using the F-35 in battle. They call it multi-platform integration. It's like a team sport in the sky. Here's how it works. The stealthy F-35s go in first. They are the scouts. Their job is to stay hidden, sneak deep into enemy territory, and use their powerful sensors to map everything. They find all the enemy radars, missile sites, and air defenses. They see the whole battlefield. Then, they send this real-time picture back to older jets like F-15s and F-16s. These older jets are not stealthy, so they wait outside the range of enemy missiles. But now, because of the F-35, they can see everything. They have perfect information. The attack starts. The F-35s strike first with their precision weapons. They take out the enemy's eyes, the radar sights. They destroy key missile launchers. They blow a hole in the enemy's shield. Once the path is clear, the older F-15s fly in. They are loaded with heavy bombs, the big firepowers that the F-35 can't carry inside its body. They hit the large, hardened targets. It's a perfect one-two punch. First, stealth and precision to open the door, then overwhelming force to destroy everything inside. 
This strategy is not a theory. Israel has used it in thousands of real missions. It's how they control the skies even when they're outnumbered. Now the US military is studying this exact method. They call it network-centric warfare. The F-35 becomes the quarterback, directing the entire team from the sky. Israel wrote the playbook with real blood and real battles. So what does all this mean? The relationship between America and Israel on the F-35 is deeper than most people think. It is not America giving Israel a gift. It is a partnership. Israel takes America's most advanced technology into the fire of combat. They find its weaknesses. They come up with fixes. They invent new ways to use it. And then they send all that priceless knowledge back to America. Israel's F-35s have more combat hours than any other country. They have faced the best enemy defenses and won. They can fly farther and hit harder because they adapted the jet for real war, and they keep their jets flying when others are stuck on the ground. For America, this data is gold. It is preparing them for a potential war with China. Every upgrade, every new tank, every software change inspired by Israel makes the American F-35 more deadly, more reliable, and more ready. The story of the F-35 is being rewritten. The final chapters aren't being written by engineers in the United States. They are being written by pilots over the Middle East in the only test that truly matters, the test of combat. The student has become the teacher, and American air power will never be the same again. If this look into how real wars change technology was interesting to you, please like this video. It helps our channel grow, war tech analysis, and subscribe for more clear, real stories about the weapons and tactics shaping our world. Thanks for watching.